tonight we're going to celebrate the one year anniversary of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons entry into force. It makes nuclear weapons illegal. And we're very fortunate to celebrate this in a very unique, special way with Helen Jacquard. And after her presentation, we'll welcome questions or comments. And if you have either raise your hand or enter your comments into the chat and we'll call on you. We have a couple of co-sponsors of this event. We all welcome you, Helen, peace activist, journalist, photographer, researcher. The floor is yours. <laughs> wow, I'm all that. <laughs> well, actually, I guess I am. Um, so uh, you're looking at a picture of the golden rule and I'm the person in the turquoise blouse um, underneath the peace symbol on the mizzen sail. This is a small sailboat with a big mission. And my um, order of presentation is I wanna talk about the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons first, because that's really why we're here. Then I wanna talk about Veterans for Peace and the Golden Rule Project. And then finally, I'd like to tell you about the new Veterans for Peace Nuclear Posture Review, which we just released this week. And I'm, we're all very excited about it. So I wanna go over that a little bit with you. So without further ado, just a little acknowledgement that Veterans for Peace is a international organization based in the United States. Um, I guess we have about 120 chapters now and many international chapters, 3,000 members. And one of their stated goals in their mission statement is to reduce and elim ultimately eliminate nuclear weapons. And their first um, big project towards that goal is the golden rule. So in 1958, uh, there were nuclear bombs being uh, dropped in the Marshall Islands. They ultimately dropped 67 nuclear bombs in the Marshall Islands. And um, so this is what the Golden Rule was originally doing, was protesting against those bombs. And this is, so this is what the Golden Rule looked like in 1958. And this is a picture of the Castle Bravo test, the biggest one that the US have ever detonated. And it exposed the Lucky Dragon 5 Japanese fishing boat to a lot of radiation. Um, Strontium-90 is released as one of the byproducts of a nuclear blast, does not exist in nature. It was blowing all over the atmosphere and getting into mother's milk and cow's milk. People were trying to stop this um, nuclear bomb testing because the whole planet was contaminated. And ultimately, the Quakers decided to get a boat and sail it into the Marshall Islands and um, just put their lives in danger in order to publicize the fact that this was going on and everybody wanted it to stop. So here's a map of where they were going. You can see they made a little attempt. They made it um, as far as Honolulu. They were stopped and another boat made it all the way to the nuclear testing zone. Look at how big that testing zone is and with the square on it, it's like huge. So they uh, got to Honolulu, they left and the Coast Guard cutter caught up with them and made them come back. The crew was arrested. They spent 60 days in jail. And because this whole activity was so well publicized, there were people, especially in Honolulu, but all over the United States, and indeed in some places all over the world where people were saying, free the crew of the golden rule and stop the nuclear bomb tests. The boat was sold in 1958 and in 2010, it was a derelict boat floating around in Humboldt Bay in far Northern California. And it was tied poorly to a dock and a gale came up and it bashed against the dock and sank. See that big hole in her side, poor thing. Um, 
they almost burned her because they were just going to use her for fire, uh, you know, build a beach fire and have some fun. But Veterans for Peace came along and decided to rebuild her. So you can, they're, they're here, they're kind of getting ready to put the engine in. So it took five years and they launched back into the waters of Humboldt Bay. Um, then we started sea trials. And then in, so then from 2015 until 2018, we sailed all up and down the West Coast from Victoria and Vancouver, BC, all the way down to Ensenada, Mexico. And finally, when President Trump um, started threatening Chairman Kim in North Korea, we decided it was time to head back out into the Pacific and see what we could do to stop all that possibility of nuclear war. So we headed to Hawaii and we went to every Hawaiian island and gave talks everywhere except for Niihau, which you can't get to um, because it's restricted. But um, we gave over a hundred presentations there. We took a lot of people sailing and it was, uh, it was really great for having the boat back in Hawaii after all of those years. A lot of people we met had seen the boat in, in uh, 1958. So it was really cool for them. We like to protest against fleet. We, do you guys have those there? Where the Navy comes into your town? No, I don't think so. Oh, we do here. You can see Golden Rule in the background. Well, in five different cities in the on the West Coast, they bring in these giant warships and they basically celebrate these, you know, instruments of destruction. So we protest against that. Uh, we love the Marshallese people and had lots of activities with them all over the Hawaiian Islands. And finally, uh, in May this uh, 2021, we brought Golden Rule back to San Francisco. And there she is at the Golden Gate Bridge. So, somewhere here, okay. 